Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, November 1st, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. Xavier today took a look at a malicious PowerShell script and some of the features implemented in it. For example, this particular PowerShell script had two different ways how it sort of avoided sandboxes. First, it queried the bias to check if it's running in a virtual machine. If strings like VMware or send were returned, then it knew it would run in a virtual machine. It also avoided sandboxes by looking at the uptime of the machine. Sandboxes typically are rebooted quite often. So if the uptime was too short, then it assumed it was running in a sandbox. It also includes functions to create screenshots and it is able to steal saved password lists from a number of different browsers. So this is pretty capable. Now these particular script snippets aren't necessarily new. Some of them, for example, come from PowerShell Empire, a framework that does implement a lot of features like this in PowerShell. And yet again, Apple updated yesterday everything. We got updates for iCloud, for Windows, for iTunes for Windows, for Safari, tvOS, macOS, iOS, and of course, watchOS. Now, probably the most well-known vulnerabilities being patched here across all platforms is the famous crack Wi-Fi or WPA2 key reuse vulnerability. It was partially addressed in prior updates, I believe, but uh, this fixes it again and hopefully right. Now, one of the new features that was enabled in macOS High Sierra was the new Apple file system. There are two vulnerabilities that are being addressed in APFS. One could leak encrypted disk data via the Thunderbolt port. That has also been patched a number of times in the past. I guess they had still a hole there for APFS and it also fixes an arbitrary code execution vulnerability. Not sure if this would be exploitable by someone actually sending a file to user. Apple as usual doesn't really provide a lot of details here, but I suspect it probably requires a local user to have access to the system and it would then lead to privilege escalation. Other than that, I do see a lot of updates for open source components in this operating system. One that sort of stuck out was TCP dump. It now fixes vulnerabilities that were found in July in TCP dump. So these are finally being addressed with this update in Mac OS High Sierra. Also a lot of WebKit vulnerabilities that of course could be exploited by malicious web pages across all operating systems. So this is certainly a critical update that you should apply soon. I don't think you have to rush it out, still test it carefully. As usual with Apple, it's take them all or take none of them. You typically are not able to just patch individual vulnerabilities. And one of the issues that we keep running into with the Internet of Things and small devices in general is that there are no standards as to how updates are supposed to work for these devices. This leads to huge problems when it comes to trying to fix vulnerabilities in that in many cases you have to go to individual devices, start an update from them, and then often the update mechanism isn't actually implemented securely. To fix some of this, three engineers from ARM have published an IETF draft with a proposed firmware update architecture. Now at this point, it really more outlines the requirements of a system like this, not really a lot of details in how to actually implement it. But at the very least, I think it provides a good checklist of things to consider if you do develop an update mechanism for an IoT device. 
Hopefully something more detailed will develop out of this over time, given that it was published by Arm Engineers and Arm being one of the companies behind a lot of the devices that makes me hope that whatever standard and details they come up with will actually find some more or less widespread implementation. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.